Welcome to the explanation of Netflix TV series 1899, released in the year 2022. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A girl was narrating about how vast is the ocean. Then we see a girl that seems to be a prisoner and was behaving crazily. She might have seen her father and was asking about her brother. Her memory was manipulated. A girl woke up and was reading a newspaper. There was news about a lost steamship named Prometheus that was still missing after a period of four months. She found a letter from her brother that stated, I found out what our father did. Meet me in New York. Don't trust anyone. The girl's name was Maura Franklin, born in Moorfield, and the date was the 19th of October, 1899. She was talking to herself. She was actually on a steamship that was sailing in the ocean. Laborers were working on the ship fueling the ship with coal. They were talking about the vanished ship Prometheus. The coal was not coming down. Supervisor asked a worker named Olek to go up and fix the problem. The lady was talking to a man named Lucien about the probability of two ships from the same company sinking. She was looking nervous. Mora came down to the dining hall. A Spanish man named Angel was asking for more drinks and was angry. Two Japanese women were talking in a strange manner at the breakfast in the dining hall. A woman named Mrs. Wilson came to Moore and started talking. We come to know that Moore was a doctor. A man came in hurry and started asking for a doctor. Her sister needed a doctor very urgently. Two men came and took him outside. Moore went outside to look at the situation. On the deck, they threatened to throw him overboard. They said he doesn't belong there. They threw him into a compartment and closed the door. Moore opened the door and asked her what happened. Her sister Tove was delivering a baby. The people around were not happy to see more around them. A woman said that it was God's baby and asked a man named Anchor to stop her. Mora turned the baby. The woman was fine now. We saw that Mora has cuts on her wrist. A man was mysteriously looking for something. Lucian and his wife were making some love in the bedroom. They were not happy though. Lucian was not good in bed and blamed his wife. Mora told Ada that she can't be a mother. She was coming up and panting. A man named Ake Larson came and closed the door. He asked Mora what she was doing. He told her that passengers from the first class are not allowed down there. Larson was captain of the ship. Two men came and gave him a paper with a signal that they were continuously receiving for the last 20 minutes. That signal was might be from the lost ship Prometheus. They were sending coordinates over and over again. This was odd that the last location and coordinates were very different. They decided to go on the coordinates they received. A worker was asking why they are turning the ship, but he was not allowed to ask questions. The ship started trembling. They thought that they are going back, but they never wanted to go back. Ada woke up Tove and told her that everyone is outside looking for the lost ship. She too not wanted to go back. Mora was looking at the letter that stated, what is lost will be found. Mora went to the captain and asked him about the lost ship. He told her that it is not clear. At least one of the passengers would be alive who is sending the signal. Mrs. Wilson came to the room of two Japanese women and told them to never talk again together at breakfast. Larson came to the passengers and told them they are going to the location of Prometheus, but the passengers were not happy. Lucian was not feeling good and his wife tried to make him comfortable. Olek was eating bread on an opening in the ship. A man named Jerome came there. He was very hungry and asked Olek to give him bread. He seems to not have eaten for days. Larson and Mora were talking about rumors about them on the deck. They were curious about what they will find about the lost ship. They found the ship and fired a flare gun. The crew wanted to go back, but Larson decided to visit the lost ship. Larson along with Mora and three other crew were ready to go on the other ship. But one of them stopped and said that something is wrong. There is no response from the ship, and there were no lights either. Larson asked Olek and Jerome to come along. Larson with other people went close to Prometheus on a lifeboat. They climbed up the ship. A man waited on the boat to get help. No one was on the ship. Coordinate signals stopped at this time. The ship seems to be haunted. Everything was damaged. The ship was resting. We see the two Japanese women talking. They decided that never changed, and they must stick to their plan. Larson and the crew went to the control room of the ship and noticed someone destroyed the telegraph. Another man climbed on the ship. Mora noticed an insect on the ship and followed it. 
They came by a cupboard that was locked from the outside. There was a huge thud. Mora tried to open the door. A little boy was sitting there and came out. A man named Daniel was holding the same little insect on the new ship and leaving it under the door of his room. On the other hand, the little boy was still silent and handed over a pyramid like something to Mora. Larson woke up in a jungle and saw a house burning with a boy and girl inside. He was in a dream. Larson and crew got a message from the company that said sink ship. There was something that company wants to hide. Larson and the crew came to know all the compasses on the ship were behaving strangely. The crew asked Larson why they only found a boy aboard Prometheus. Something strange must have happened to the ship. They were curious about what has happened to Prometheus. The boy was sleeping in Mora's room, and Mora was observing the pyramid thing. Mora left the room, and the boy woke up. Workers were asking Oleg about the ship. They were making guesses. Larson came down and asked Oleg to find out how much coal is left and don't tell anyone about that. Larson then came to Mora. They were talking about why the boy haven't spoken anything yet. Larson heard someone singing and ran from there. The poor people down the ship were praying. Angel and his friend were in their room. Mora confronted Daniel in front of her room. Daniel and Mora introduced themselves. Daniel said that some strange noises were coming out of the room. Mora brought some fruit to the boy and asked what happened to him. Where were the passengers and who locked him in the cabinet? The boy said nothing, took the pyramid, and handed it over to Mora. Mora asked about what is this thing. The boy replied nothing. Crestor and Ada were talking in the washroom area. Angel came down and started talking to him. He gave cigarettes to him. Tova came down to see her brother. She asked him about Angel. Larson was talking to his associate about the Prometheus. They were looking very worried. The mystery of the boy was still understood. He told Larson that they are waiting for his orders. Crew and passengers were asking questions. He asked cut from here. Lucian and Ling Yi were talking on the observation deck. But the other Japanese woman came and got Ling Yi along with her. Lucian was approached by Mrs. Wilson. She offered him Ling Yi. Jerome trespassed into Lucian's room. He put a metal-like thing on the table and hide under the table before Lucian's wife came. She went to the bathroom, and Jerome ran from there. We come to know that Larson's wife set herself and his kids on fire. This was haunting Larson. Larson also got a letter that said what is lost will be found. He heard someone singing again, and so her daughter Nia. He was scared. In the room, her daughter was singing a song, and they set themselves on fire. It was all his imagination. He saw the same little insect and followed it. He found a pathway and climbed it. He got into a bedroom and was very scared. There was a signature of the pyramid on the floor tile. Mora was talking to the boy. She ran her hand through his hair and saw the same pyramid symbol. But the boy stopped her and indicated her to be quiet. Larson came and asked the boy about what happened on the ship in anger. But Mora took her outside. Larson told her about her dead daughter and the boy was listening to them. Daniel came and asked Laura if her name is Irish but you are not. Clemens was on the observation deck, and Jerome came and started talking to her. Clemens told Jerome that she knew that you have made up your mind about me the moment you saw me. Jerome agreed with her statement. Jerome came down and was spotted by the crew. They ran after him and cart him after a little fight. Tover and other people were looking for Ada down in their class. Her name was Ada and she was the sister of Tova. Tova came to Angel to return the cigarettes to him and told him to stay away from her brother Crestor. Angel's friend was angry. Angel, his friend Ramiro, and Crestor were gay actually. Olek came to Larson to tell him that they have roughly 3,000 tons of coal left. He asked when are we getting back on course but got no response. Mora was in the room with the boy. She told him that she got a letter from her brother who is missing for four months. The letter has the same symbol as on his neck. She wanted to know the truth. She asked him what happened on the Prometheus. But the boy remained silent. Daniel came out of his room and left that insect on the floor. Ada found the insect and followed it. She went up after the insect. Daniel followed and took the insect back and said sorry to Ada. Larson came to tell the passengers that I've decided to turn the ship around and tow the Prometheus back to Europe. What? But everyone opposed his decision. He told them that the Carberus, their ship, doesn't hold enough coal to tow the Prometheus to their destination. Passengers said that there is no sense in saving an empty ship. 
he said that he has made a decision. Larson told Moore that someone wanted him to find that ship and showed her a letter that has a picture of his family in a piece of newspaper. Larson badly wanted to know what happened on that ship. Moore told him that no one wants to go back. Moore confronted Daniel outside her room. Daniel told him that this is not a good decision to go back home. Then we see that Prometheus was towed to Kerberos and they were going back to Europe. The crew found the dead body of Ada on the deck. Ling Yi woke up from a dream where she was sinking and closed in a box. Mrs. Wilson told Ling Yi to meet her in the room after breakfast. Ling Yi's mother was worried that they made a big mistake to board this ship. But there is no turning back. Ada's body was being examined, and the doctor told her the death might be due to a heart attack. The ship stopped, and the crew told Larson that fog covered us in less than a second. It was strange. They were unable to navigate due to unclear views. Larson decided to hold the position until fog is cleared. He took more with her to show her something. The crew was not happy with any of his decisions. Larson showed her a ribbon he found on the Prometheus that belonged to her daughter. Moore said that it is all his hallucinations. This has nothing to do with reality. He showed her a pathway under his bed and said this is not supposed to be here. They decided to go back to Prometheus to find the captain's logbook. Mrs. Wilson undressed Lingy and was happy to know she is a virgin. She asked her to meet at 8 p.m. The crew requested Larson to leave Prometheus and go back on course, but he denied it. Ling Yi was hiding in a box on deck and Oleg found and took her with him. The crew came down and took Tova to the dead body of Ada. They told her it was a heart attack. Larson was unable to find the logbook and found the same pathway in the captain's bedroom. Moore went down and saw a wall. The boy came from under the bed and met Daniel. Daniel asked if he find it, but the boy said no. Larson told Moore that the ships were sold and refurbished for three months. The symbol belongs to the company, but the pathway doesn't make any sense. Franz found three more dead bodies on Kerberos. Larson and Moore came down and saw kilns. They thought that everyone was cremated and started searching for the bones. Larson found the passenger list of Prometheus. Lucian chalks while he was with Lingyi. Larson returned to the ship and told Moore not to tell anyone what they saw on Prometheus. Franz was planning to take over the ship along with the poor people. They imprisoned Oleg along with Jerome. Franz took every crew, including Larson, hostage, and Daniel did something strange on a device that was connected wirelessly to the Kerberos ship. Suddenly the fog vanished and the ship disappeared. Jerome and Lucien were seen fighting in the past. Jerome woke up and Franz took Jerome and Oleg to throw dead bodies in the water. Franz and crew noticed they are on the course back in a moment. They traveled that distance in three days. That was strange. A man from the crew came to the third class to tell them that all was happening due to the boy. They all were out on the hunt for the boy. Moore told them it was a huge mistake. While Larson and Ramiro are about to escape from the room, they were looking for the boy. He was hiding under the bed in the compartment. They locked Moore's room. Daniel came down to the ship to do something on the machine. Jerome ran from there by luring the guards. He went to Clement's room to hide. The boy helped Moore to get out of the room with the help of a little insect. That insect was guiding them to find Larson. Jerome and Clemens found Larson. They all decided to get off the Kerberos. They headed to lifeboats. But Franz caught them. They opened fire on Jerome and took the boy with them. All were fighting on the deck and Tova's mom threw the boy off the ship. But after some time it seemed that the boy was back on the ship in a cupboard like in the Prometheus. Moore tried to open the door but someone opened fire on her. Suddenly time stopped and Moore was very shocked at this moment. She got out the boy of the cupboard and the boy hugged her. All this happened due to the pyramid. Franz and Tove's mother was motivating others to get hold of the ship. The boy was taking Moore somewhere. A lot of people started marching to the deck of the ship. Franz tried to stop them but was not successful in doing so. Ying Li's mother, Crester, and everyone else started jumping off the ship. Moore angrily asked the boy about what was happening. He wrote on the paper they are listening and whispered, Sebastian was pressing buttons to send a message on some console while passengers were still jumping off the ship. Larson and Franz tried to stop them but failed. Daniel went to make some changes on the machine in the ship to stop them from jumping. The boy went down the shaft and opened a pathway with the help of a little insect. Moore followed him and they were out on the land. 
There was a home there that was like a hospital where Mora's memories were manipulated. Daniel followed them. Daniel asked something to the boy. He replied that she doesn't remember anything. Jerome came to Lucian's room and tied the couple to bed. He later tied himself to not go to jump off the ship. Everyone was tying themselves for their safety. Daniel was changing something in the machine. A worker stopped him and they started fighting with each other. Daniel killed the worker by pressing a button on the device. Mora was in the hospital with her father. She was asking about her brother. They injected her there and she was unconscious. She then woke up and met Larson. She explained why her name was on the list of Prometheus passengers. She told her name is Mora Singleton and she is the daughter of the owner of the shipping company. She told him that her father Henry Singleton is doing some kind of experiment to study human behavior. He did something to passengers to study their minds and behavior. She received the same letter as Larson received. She suddenly saw that insect and opened the door in the shaft. She went out of the ship with Larson. He saw his home where he lived. A crew told Sebastian that the shipping company sent a message to sink the ship. Sebastian killed him with the same little device. Daniel was successful in stopping people to jump off the ship. Henry received the message from Sebastian and replied that he doesn't have much time. Sebastian must bring the boy to Henry. Henry was watching everyone on the ship on screens. Tove was running after Ada in the jungle. She woke up. Sebastian was sending messages from the ship. Larson was assigning duties to everyone. They had to work together and find land. Larson went in search of the boy with Mora. They were searching for survivors and noticed something black emerging from the ceiling. Olek was in the boiler room with Yingli. They were working to feed up the boilers with coal with other crew and passengers. Larson and Mora were in hospital. They were in the room where memories were manipulated and experiments on the brain were conducted. They noticed that the room's exterior was covered with the ship's hull. Mrs. Wilson touched the black substance that started spreading on her body. It was emerging everywhere on the ship, blocking pathways. Sebastian came outside to meet Henry, which was against the protocols. Henry ordered Sebastian to bring the boy along with the pyramid. Daniel was in the hospital with Larson and Mora. He makes some moves on the device us, and Larson was in some other perspective. He told Mora that he and Mora are husband and wife. Mora locked Daniel in the room. She was outside the ship to enter. Henry was watching her on the screens. Daniel and Mora were talking in bed. He was dreaming while locked in the room. He tried to escape from the ship from a pathway. Mora was back on the ship. The black substance was spreading on the ship. Mora asked Sebastian about Larson. Sebastian took out a hidden device and started tracing the boy on the ship. Daniel was free and out of the room. He noticed that everything around was glitching as it's all artificial. The ship was caught by a storm. Mora was in a large room where she found her pics with Daniel and the boy. She came to know that they are family. Daniel was opening a grave that was actually a pathway where the boy was hiding. Daniel told Mora that all this is not real. It is a simulation. They are all caught in the simulation. It's a cycle that never ends. The ship was getting out of control in the large waves. Henry got a message from Sebastian. Mora gave a key to Daniel. While many passengers and crew were working in the burner rooms to fuel up the ship, Daniel and Moore approached the same hidden device that Sebastian used a while ago. Daniel changed the codes to continue the simulation. They were in a loop. The simulation was shutting down. The storm was getting more powerful. Waves were taking over the ship. Water was getting inside the ship. Sebastian came to Henry with the boy. Daniel and Moore found that pathways under the bed were disappeared. Henry told the boy that Moore was the creator of everything that was happening. He was shutting down the simulation. The ship was traveling through a tunnel of water. Larson was drinking in some room, maybe on Prometheus. There were a lot of ships around. He noticed a whirlpool of water and Kerberos was coming out of that. Prometheus and Kerberos were along with a lot of other ships that were part of the experiment. The boy was calling his mom. Henry explained to the boy that everyone on the ship wanted to forget their past and they are now stuck. Mora was behind all this was happening. Mora is the only person who can get all out. Larson was on the ship asking Mora how he got to Prometheus. Mora told everyone that her father was the owner of the shipping company, and he made them forget why they were on this ship. This simulation does not follow any rules or logic. None of them remembered why or how they got on the ship. 
Every one of them had a letter of invitation to board the ship. Daniel was changing the codes of the machine on the ship. Henry was making the boy remember the past. People wanted to get off. Larson and Moore noticed that the pathway under the bed disappeared. She used her ring to open the path in the other room. She was in a large bedroom. She showed her pictures with Daniel to Larson. She was explaining how the brain works. They opened the wall and saw wires everywhere. Daniel was successful in taking control of the machine. The black substance started to spread at a very fast speed. All the passages were closed as it was all animation. They were stuck in the ship. Henry got the boy to the room where memories were manipulated. He proved that Mora was all behind this. Mora and Larson were out of the ship. He told the boy that Mora has the pyramid key to stopping this simulation. Pathways were opening like an animation, and people were getting out of the ship on the land. Henry ordered Sebastian to find Mora and get the key. Daniel was changing codes, and Henry was thinking he would make them trap in the loop forever. Henry told the boy that Daniel is doing all this for his mother. Daniel will choose his wife for his son. Moore told Larson that her father did something to their mind in that building. Sebastian caught them and asked for the key. Moore gave him the key. Sebastian killed Larson with the device and took Moore to her father Henry. Moore was in the same room where memories are manipulated. They were arguing about whose fault is this? Who is the creator? Henry injected Moore with a syringe. He used the key in the pyramid, but nothing happened because Daniel changed the codes. The simulation was deleted. Everything disappeared. Mora was lying on the land. She met Daniel. It worked. They were in another simulation. Daniel told Mora that they created this. There was another pyramid to end this simulation. Her wedding ring was key to ending the simulation. She gave him the key and they unlocked the pyramid. There was a glitch. Mora woke up in a machine in a strange room. It was like cryo sleep. Everyone from the ship was there. Moore looked out the window, and she noticed they are on a spaceship in space. This was also like a simulation. In the end, we saw that this was the year 2099. This was the end of season 1 of 1899. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share this video, and subscribe to this channel to support. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.